celebrities. They not hitting like they used to. Okay, I'ma keep it real with y'all. I mean, we, we a family here. I used to have a big crush on the group Immature and Bone Thugs and Harmony. And yes, I used to be a super fan. I used to go to the concerts, buy the merch, used to have their little posters, you know, hanging up on my wall and everything. But that's when celebrities had stage presence and talent. But now today with today's celebrities, I could care less. It's like nobody is really hardcore interested in them. Like sometimes it's even hard for them to get people to go to their free meet and greets. Except if you like Chris Brown. It's like a thousand dollars to go to his meet and greets, but you know. See, I blame the internet. Mm-hmm. See, back in the day, we did not have the access that you guys have to your artists today, like Michael Jackson, Janet Jackson, uh, Mariah Carey. We knew nothing about them except what they wanted us to know, which led them to be like mysterious and godlike in many people's eyes. But today, we see that celebrities are human, just like us, which kind of takes away the spark. And half of these celebrities is not even relatable no more. With majority of them, everything feels like so fake and forced. Plus, with social media now, we got regular people just putting out way more interesting stuff. I'd rather follow somebody creative and authentic versus somebody who just wants to show off all of their money in private jets all day. Honestly, I'm all about watching people that I can actually connect and vibe with. That's what I'm on today. Sorry, celebrities. The newest iPhone drop. <sighs> I'm filming this on my iPhone 6 Plus right now and I am not ashamed. Cause ain't no way I'm coughing up rent money to be talking and texting to the same people that I was talking and texting to last week. Man, do you remember when the iPhone drop used to be like a huge event? People was literally sleeping outside of Apple to get their hands on one. But now, bruh, it's the same phone every 12 months with just like a slightly different color and like a couple of more camera lenses. It's, it's, it's getting embarrassing. It just don't excite me no more. Now, if Apple brought back the T-Mobile Sidekick 3, ah, uh, I'm on that thing. Pure nostalgia just hits me when I think about that phone. The smoothness of the way it used to just like kick open, the click of the buttons on the keyboard, down to the music it used to make when you used to flip open the screen. Uh, you could not tell me back in the day that I wasn't important. But the iPhone ain't hitting like that. I'm just bored with the iPhone. Like they really out here trying to sell me on the idea that I need to buy a new phone every 12 months. Meanwhile, my current iPhone 6 work just fine. My little oop still rocking. <laughs> Apple just milking people at this point. It used to be exciting, but now I'm like, all right, what y'all got that's actually new? Nothing, mm -hmm, just what I thought. So yeah, I'm not excited about the iPhone no more. Y'all can keep the hype. I'll upgrade with my screen crack or something. Until then, I'm chilling. Subscriber count. If you a YouTuber, that YouTube studio app, it's like crack in the 80s. I used to be obsessed with it. First thing in the morning when I open my eyes, grab my phone. Did I get any new subscribers today? What do my views look like? What do my analytics look like? Baby, YouTube had me trained. Every new sub felt like a win, like a dopamine hit. And I was like refreshing the page like every 10 minutes. But now, <laughs> I don't look at that subscriber count no more. Now don't get it twisted. I love all 4K of y'all like to the moon and back. And it's amazing to see my platform grow. But chasing numbers, nah, that's exhausting. At some point, you start to realize that subscriber count means nothing. If your audience is not vibing with you, What's the point of having 100,000 subscribers and it's crickets in the comments section and zero engagement? It just takes the fun out of creating content. I do this to help and inspire others, to communicate, to build a community, not to talk to myself. I'd rather have a solid, engaged community over a bunch of empty followers any day. I'm focused on quality, not clout. I'm here for the real ones, I'm here for you. Yet you, yes you that's watching on your phone or your iPad right now. I'm here for you, not just some big number on the screen. Gossiping. See, back in the day, I used to love me some tea. Like, who did what? They said what? And who did what with who? But now that I'm older and more mature, I start to see how gossiping makes me look and feel. 
and it's not in the best light. So now you just got done yapping your gums about how your neighbor just got into it with his wife. He then had a baby on her with another woman. The fight got so heated she grabbed a lamp and she hit him over the head with it. He got up, got in the car, drove to the bank and cleaned out their joint bank account. And the other woman that he was cheating with was her first cousin. Now tell me, how do you really feel after chatting all that negativity to somebody else? Are you not human and make mistakes and go through hardship as well? Baby, you did all this talking and your bank account is still negative. You still haven't hit your personal goals and you are still battling your own demons, but you got the nerve to talk about somebody else. The Bible says, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. In other words, if the words that's coming out of your mouth is not uplifting and encouraging others, then shut up. It's exhausting and quite honestly, very low energy vibe. And half of the time, the gossip ain't even facts. It's just rumors flying around. I'm talking to you, Shade Room. And you out here investing time into all this gossip for what? It don't bring nothing to your life. Plus, you realize that spreading negativity like that just comes right back on you and it makes you look desperate for attention. And if you're talking about your neighbor like that, just spreading all her business around town, girl, what is you saying about me behind my back? Uh, mm -mm, no, girl, we are no longer friends. These days, I'm looking for real conversations. If we ain't talking about growth, money, or leveling up spiritually, we ain't got nothing to talk about. I leave the gossiping for the people that ain't got nothing better to do. So if you're just trying to sit around and gossip about people, girl, you are not getting my energy. I'm on a whole different wave now. Fast food. Fast food just don't do it for me no more, y'all. Lemon pepper wings used to be the light to my soul. I used to run to my car with my little greasy wing stop bag with the little grease seeping through it. And I used to devour it in my car like a little hobbit, like, oh. But now, girl, I need some fiber in my damn diet. The older you get, the more you realize that that fast food, it is just slowing you down, making you feel sluggish and bloated. You eat that stuff and then five minutes later, you feel like you need a nap, a hard nap. Give me fruits, give me veggies, give me foods that I can eat that after I eat them, I still feel energetic and I'm ready to go about my day. I used to be excited scarfing down some Domino's pizza when I was a kid, but now I'd rather have something that's actually good for my body. Plus, fast food is like all the same now. It's all greasy, fattening, and disappointing. Unless you sweet greens. I love me some sweet greens. And don't get me started on how expensive it is for the same mediocre food. Like, why is McDonald's so expensive? I thought they had a dollar menu. See, these days, I am more on that higher quality, more healthy home-cooked meal train. I'm sorry to say, but fast food is just not worth the hype no more. Theme parks. <sighs> I recently took a trip to Six Flags in LA, and I kid you not, it was $69 for two dry pepperoni sliced pizzas, two Cokes, and a funnel cake. Although I had a good time, mainly because who I was with, I'm not sure it was worth the hassle and the money. Now, I'm a hardcore roller coaster junkie, all right? But baby, them lines, them lines is too damn long. And now they have it to where you can pay extra to cut everybody else in the line and go straight front to the line and ride the rides first before everybody else. Like, wait a minute. Why is it two hours to ride the Riddler's Revenge and that ride is 100 years old? The crowds is crazy, the lines is crazy. And let's be real, by the time you get on two rides, you already tired and broke. See, the magic is not there in the theme parks like it used to be. Growing up, theme parks was lit. I mean, Santa Cruz Beach, Boardwalk, Great America, Six Flags, all them. But as an older adult, it is just loud, hot, and overpriced. Plus, waiting hours for a one minute Maybe two minute ride? <laughs> nah, I'm good. Theme parks used to be fun, but now I'd rather just stay here and sip my water and chill with y'all. So much more fun. And the water doesn't cost 650. Going viral. 
I went viral one day on TikTok and I was like, the worst day of my life. The whole going viral thing used to be like every creator's goal. Everybody in a mama be trying to catch that viral wave. But nobody talks about the mental anguish that comes with virality. When you go viral, baby, you are no longer in the safe space of your supporters and followers. You are now thrust into the pits of hell where most people are judgmental, angry, jealous, and ignorant. They will quickly and happily type up a comment that they know that they will never ever say to your face. When I first started making videos, going viral, like I thought that was like, you got lucky, you hit the jackpot. But now, mm -mm, you can keep it. Keep, keep it. Going viral is cool for like a hot minute, but what does it even mean long term? You get all this attention for a second, then people move on to the next trend, and then you back where you started. Plus, the pressure of going viral can have you doing some crazy out of character stuff just for some views. I don't ever want to sell out my soul or tarnish my character just for some views. I'm trying to build something real. I'm not trying to chase no viral moment. I'd rather create content that brings people together over time instead of just being famous for a week. Right now, I'm just focused on staying true to what I do. And like, I'm not trying to be the next viral moment. No puppies if you want my opinion puppies are just human kids with fur all right y'all yeah don't shoot me i get it puppies are the cutest things ever but the excitement nah, it ain't there no more it nope it then left the building it's gone i remember i used to see a puppy and be like oh my god I'm gonna let me hold him oh my god i love you <laughs> but now all i see is work 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 they cute for like five minutes. And then it's chewed shoes, accidents on the floor, and crackhead energy. It's like having a furry toddler that never chills. The idea of a puppy sounds dope, but in reality, that's a whole commitment. You gotta train them, clean up after them, deal with the wild puppy phases. I'm at the point like, I need a chilled, already trained, adult dog if it ain't that i'm good so yeah the puppy phase is cute and all but it don't last when you gotta deal with all that chaos y'all nah i'm cool with that watch me get a puppy next week being an entrepreneur don't nobody want a job no more when i get online all i hear is about how people just want to clock out of their nine to fives like forever which in a way i completely understand because Corporate culture can be so damn toxic. One day, seven years ago, I just walked into my job and I said, you know what, I don't feel like being here anymore. I'm done. And I grabbed all my belongings and I left. And I haven't been at a nine to five since. So if you guys want a video on that, just let me know. I will make one for you, just, just let me know. But at the same time, do you know how stressful it is being an entrepreneur? A. Don't be fooled. Everybody be online hyping up the entrepreneur life. They flexing their money, their vacations, all the free time that they got. I used to think the same way until I became one. Some days, being an entrepreneur is not what it's all cracked up to be. Please believe it. Behind all that Instagram hype is a whole lot of sleepless nights, stress, and constant grind. They don't tell you about all the pressures of running everything yourself, trying to keep up with the bills, or how sometimes it can just be straight up lonely. You gotta be your own boss, your own employee, your own support system. And to be honest, some months, the bag don't be bagging. That, that money don't be looking right. I'm just gonna be real with you. Now, I'm not saying that it's all bad. It definitely have its perks. But the way some people glamorize it, nope, it's a fantasy. Being an entrepreneur is cool if you ready for that constant hustle, but the excitement ain't there like it used to be for me. Maybe because I've experienced it and I'm in it now. But would I flip the script and go back to a nine to five by choice? Nah, I like, I like this. I like where I'm at. I like my freedom, but I'm not gonna lie. It has its challenges. So the excitement is kind of like it dwindled down. Your girl is all about that balanced life now payday or direct deposit i'm an adult so there's no such thing as a payday us adults have renamed it it's now called being 
jumped in broad daylight. I am in no way saying that I do not like to see money hit my account. Ooh, we all love that. I'm just saying I don't like how violently my money leaves my account. Payday can feel like a fight. Your car note is a gut punch. Cell phone bill slap in the face. Groceries got you in a headlock. You got kids? Up, oh, uppercut. And then rent just takes you out with a body slam. And then when you do see the direct deposit hit, you like, okay, now how much of this is actually mine? How much can I actually spend on myself for pleasure? You start budgeting and thinking about the stuff that's already spoken for. And then the direct deposit, it just don't hit no more. It's not exciting anymore. I'm just saying, it's crazy how the excitement of payday just fades when you have to adult and take care of responsibilities. Don't get me wrong, I still appreciate that payday. Yes, yes, God, please, please send it my way. But the thrill of having it right now at this period of my life, it's more about how I can stretch that cash instead of just letting it just chill and just lay in my bank account. All right, fam, those are the things on my list that just don't do it for me no more. The excitement is gone. But I want to hear from you. What are some things that you used to love and it's just not, just not hitting no more? Please drop it below in the comments. And once again, my name is Chris. Thank you so much for spending time with me. And like always, take care of you. Love you much. Bye.